Stephen Arthur Pinker born September 18, 1954, is a Canadian-American cognitive psychologist, linguist, and popular science author. He is Johnston Family Professor in the Department of Psychology at Harvard University, and is known for his advocacy of evolutionary psychology and the computational theory of mind. Pinker's academic specializations are visual cognition and psycholinguistics. His experimental subjects include mental imagery, shape recognition, visual attention, children's language development, regular and irregular phenomena in language, the neural bases of words and grammar, and the psychology of cooperation and communication, including euphemism, innuendo, emotional expression, and common knowledge. He has written two technical books that proposed a general theory of language acquisition and applied it to children's learning of verbs. In particular, his work with Alan Prince published in 1989 critiqued the connectionist model of how children acquire the past tense of English verbs, arguing instead that children use default rules such as adding ed to make regular forms, sometimes in error, but are obliged to learn irregular forms one by one. In his popular books, he has argued that the human faculty for language is an instinct, an innate behavior shaped by natural selection and adapted to our communication needs. He is the author of eight books for a general audience. Five of these, The Language Instinct 1994, How the Mind Works 1997, Words and Rules 2000, The Blank Slate 2002, and The Stuff of Thought 2007, describe aspects of the field of psycholinguistics and cognitive science, and include accounts of his own research. In the sixth book, The Better Angels of Our Nature 2011, Pinker makes the case that violence in human societies has, in general, steadily declined with time, and identifies six major causes of this decline. His seventh book, The Sense of Style 2014, is intended as a general style guide that is informed by modern science and psychology, offering advice on how to produce more comprehensible and unambiguous writing in nonfiction contexts and explaining why so much of today's academic and popular writing is difficult for readers to understand. His eighth book, Enlightenment Now 2018, continues the optimistic thesis of the better angels of our nature by using social science data from various sources to argue for a general improvement of the human condition over recent history. Pinker has been named as one of the world's most influential intellectuals by various magazines. He has won awards from the American Psychological Association, the National Academy of Sciences, the Royal Institution, the Cognitive Neuroscience Society and the American Humanist Association. He delivered the Gifford Lectures at the University of Edinburgh in 2013. He has served on the editorial boards of a variety of journals, and on the advisory boards of several institutions. He has frequently participated in public debates on science and society. Biography Pinker was born in Montreal, Quebec, in 1954, to a middle-class Jewish family. His parents were Roslyn Weisenfeld and Harry Pinker. His grandparents emigrated to Canada from Poland and Romania in 1926, and owned a small necktie factory in Montreal. His father, a lawyer, first worked as a manufacturer's representative, while his mother was first a homemaker then a guidance counselor and high school vice principal. He has two younger siblings. His brother Robert is a policy analyst for the Canadian government, while his sister, Susan Pinker, is a psychologist and writer who authored The Sexual Paradox and The Village Effect. Pinker married Nancy Etkoff in 1980 and they divorced in 1992. He married Ilavanil Sabia in 1995 and they too divorced. His third wife, whom he married in 2007, is the novelist and philosopher Rebecca Goldstein. He has two stepdaughters, the novelist Yael Goldstein Love and the poet Danielle Blau. Pinker graduated from Dawson College in 1973. He received a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology from McGill University in 1976, and earned his Doctorate of Philosophy in Experimental Psychology at Harvard University in 1979 under Stephen Coslin. He did research at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology MIT for a year, after which he became an assistant professor at Harvard and then Stanford University. From 1982 until 2003, Pinker taught at the Department of Brain and Cognitive Sciences at MIT, was the co-director of the Center for Cognitive Science 1985 and eventually became the director of the Center for Cognitive Neuroscience 1994 taking a one-year sabbatical at the University of California, Santa Barbara, in 1995–96. 
As of 2003, he is the Johnston Family Professor of Psychology at Harvard. From 2008 to 2013, he also held the title of Harvard College Professor in recognition of his dedication to teaching. He currently gives lectures as a visiting professor at the New College of the Humanities, a private college in London. About his Jewish background, Pinker has said, I was never religious in the theological sense. I never outgrew my conversion to atheism at 13, but at various times was a serious cultural Jew." As a teenager, he says he considered himself an anarchist until he witnessed civil unrest following a police strike in 1969, when As a young teenager in proudly peaceable Canada during the Romantic 1960s, I was a true believer in Bakunin's anarchism. I laughed off my parents' argument that if the government ever laid down its arms all hell would break loose. Our competing predictions were put to the test at 8 a.m. on October 17, 1969, when the Montreal police went on strike. This decisive empirical test left my politics in tatters and offered a foretaste of life as a scientist. Pinker identifies himself as an equity feminist, which he defines as a moral doctrine about equal treatment that makes no commitments regarding open empirical issues in psychology or biology. He reported the result of a test of his political orientation that characterized him as neither leftist nor rightist, more libertarian than authoritarian. He describes himself as having experienced a primitive tribal stirring after his genes were shown to trace back to the Middle East, noting that he found it just as thrilling to zoom outward in the diagrams of my genetic lineage and see my place in a family tree that embraces all of humanity. Pinker also identifies himself as an atheist. In the 2007 interview with the Point of Inquiry podcast, Pinker states that he would defend atheism as an empirically supported view. Quote, he sees theism and atheism as competing empirical hypotheses, and states that we're learning more and more about what makes us tick, including our moral sense, without needing the assumption of a deity or a soul. It's naturally getting crowded out by the successive naturalistic explanations. Topic. Research and theory Pinker's research on visual cognition, begun in collaboration with his thesis advisor, Stephen Coslin, showed that mental images represent scenes and objects as they appear from a specific vantage point rather than capturing their intrinsic three-dimensional structure, and thus correspond to the neuroscientist David Marr's theory of a two-and-a-half-dimensional sketch. He also showed that this level of representation is used in visual attention, and in object recognition, at least for asymmetrical shapes, contrary to Marr's theory that recognition uses viewpoint-independent representations. In psycholinguistics, Pinker became known early in his career for promoting computational learning theory as a way to understand language acquisition in children. He wrote a tutorial review of the field followed by two books that advanced his own theory of language acquisition, and a series of experiments on how children acquire the passive, dative, and locative constructions. These books were Language Learnability and Language Development 1984, in Pinker's words, Outlin -ing a theory of how children acquire the words and grammatical structures of their mother tongue and Learnability and Cognition, the Acquisition of Argument Structure 1989, in Pinker's words, focus -ing on one aspect of this process, the ability to use different kinds of verbs in appropriate sentences, such as intransitive verbs, transitive verbs, and verbs taking different combinations of complements and indirect objects. He then focused on verbs of two kinds that illustrate what he considers to be the processes required for human language, retrieving whole words from memory, like the past form of the irregular verb, bring, namely, brought, and using rules to combine parts of words, like the past form of the regular verb, walk, namely, walked. In 1988 Pinker and Alan Prince published an influential critique of a connectionist model of the acquisition of the past tense a textbook problem in language acquisition, followed by a series of studies of how people use and acquire the past tense. This included a monograph on children's regularization of irregular forms and his popular 1999 book, Words and Rules, The Ingredients of Language. Pinker argued that language depends on two things, the associative remembering of sounds and their meanings in words, and the use of rules to manipulate symbols for grammar. 
He presented evidence against connectionism, where a child would have to learn all forms of all words and would simply retrieve each needed form from memory, in favor of the older alternative theory, the use of words and rules combined by generative phonology. He showed that mistakes made by children indicate the use of default rules to add suffixes such as ed, for instance, braked and comed for broke and came. He argued that this shows that irregular verb forms in English have to be learnt and retrieved from memory individually, and that the children making these errors were predicting the regular ed ending in an open-ended way by applying a mental rule. This rule for combining verbs stems and the usual suffix can be expressed as v past v s t e m plus d, where v is a verb and d is the regular ending. Pinker further argued that since the ten most frequently occurring English verbs be, have, do, say, make are all irregular, while 98.2% of the thousand least common verbs are regular, there is a massive correlation of frequency and irregularity. He explains this by arguing that every irregular form, such as took, came, and got, has to be committed to memory by the children in each generation, or else lost, and that the common forms are the most easily memorized. Any irregular verb that falls in popularity past a certain point is lost, and all future generations will treat it as a regular verb instead. In 1990, Pinker, with Paul Bloom, published the paper, Natural Language and Natural Selection, arguing that the human language faculty must have evolved through natural selection. The article provided arguments for a continuity based view of language evolution, contrary to then current discontinuity based theories that see language as suddenly appearing with the advent of Homo sapiens as a kind of evolutionary accident. This discontinuity based view was prominently argued by two of the main authorities, linguist Noam Chomsky and Stephen Jay Gould. The paper became widely cited and created renewed interest in the evolutionary prehistory of language, and has been credited with shifting the central question of the debate from did language evolve? To how did language evolve? The article also presaged Pinker's argument in the language instinct. Pinker's research includes delving into human nature and what science says about it. In his interview on the Point of Inquiry podcast in 2007, he provides the following examples of what he considers defensible conclusions of what science says human nature is. The sexes are not statistically identical. Their interests and talents form two overlapping distributions. Any policy that wants to provide equal outcomes for both men and women will have to discriminate against one or the other. Individuals differ in personality and intelligence. People favor themselves and their families over an abstraction called society. Humans are systematically self-deceived. Each one of us thinks of ourselves as more competent and benevolent than we are. People crave status and power. He informs the listeners that one can read more about human nature in his book, Blank Slate. Pinker also speaks about evolutionary psychology in the podcast and believes that this area of science is going to pay off. He cites the fact that there are many areas of study, such as beauty, religion, play, and sexuality, that were not studied 15 years ago. It is thanks to evolutionary psychology that these areas are being studied. <laughs> Popularization of science Human cognition and natural language Pinker's 1994 The Language Instinct was the first of several books to combine cognitive science with behavioral genetics and evolutionary psychology. It introduces the science of language and popularizes Noam Chomsky's theory that language is an innate faculty of mind, with the controversial twist that the faculty for language evolved by natural selection as an adaptation for communication. Pinker criticizes several widely held ideas about language, that it needs to be taught, that people's grammar is poor and getting worse with new ways of speaking, the Sapper-Whorf hypothesis that language limits the kinds of thoughts a person can have, and that other great apes can learn languages. Pinker sees language as unique to humans, evolved to solve the specific problem of communication among social hunter-gatherers. He argues that it is as much an instinct as specialized adaptative behavior in other species, such as a spider's web weaving or a beaver's dam building. Pinker states in his introduction that his ideas are deeply influenced by Chomsky. He also lists scientists whom Chomsky influenced to 
open up whole new areas of language study, from child development and speech perception to neurology and genetics." Eric Lenberg, George Miller, Roger Brown, Morris Halley and Alvin Liberman. Brown mentored Pinker through his thesis. Pinker stated that Brown's funny and instructive Book Words and Things 1958 was one of the inspirations for the language instinct, the reality of Pinker's proposed language instinct, and the related claim that grammar is innate and genetically based, has been contested by many linguists. One prominent opponent of Pinker's view is Jeffrey Sampson whose 1997 book, Educating Eve, the language instinct debate has been described as the definitive response to Pinker's book. Sampson argues that while it may seem attractive to argue the nature side of the nature versus nurture debate, the nurture side may better support the creativity and nobility of the human mind. Sampson denies there is a language instinct, and argues that children can learn language because people can learn anything. Others have sought a middle ground between Pinker's nativism and Sampson's culturalism. The assumptions underlying the nativist view have also been criticized in Jeffrey Elman's Rethinking Innateness, a connectionist perspective on development, which defends the connectionist approach that Pinker attacked. In his 1996 book Impossible Minds, the machine intelligence researcher Igor Alexander calls the language instinct excellent, and argues that Pinker presents a relatively soft claim for innatism, accompanied by a strong dislike of the standard social sciences model or SSSM Pinker's term, which supposes that development is purely dependent on culture. Further, Alexander writes that while Pinker criticizes some attempts to explain language processing with neural nets, Pinker later makes use of a neural net to create past tense verb forms correctly. Alexander concludes that while he doesn't support the SSSM, a cultural repository of language just seems the easy trick for an efficient evolutionary system armed with an iconic state machine to play. Two other books, How the Mind Works and The Blank Slate 2002, broadly surveyed the mind and defended the idea of a complex human nature with many mental faculties that are adaptive Pinker is an ally of Daniel Dennett and Richard Dawkins in many disputes surrounding adaptationism. Another major theme in Pinker's theories is that human cognition works, in part, by combinatorial symbol manipulation, not just associations among sensory features, as in many connectionist models. On the debate around the blank slate, Pinker called Thomas Sowell's book A Conflict of Visions, wonderful, and explained that, the tragic vision, and the, utopian vision, are the views of human nature behind right and left-wing ideologies, in words and rules, the ingredients of language 1999, Pinker argues from his own research that regular and irregular phenomena are products of computation and memory lookup, respectively, and that language can be understood as an interaction between the two. Words and Rules", is also the title of an essay by Pinker outlining many of the topics discussed in the book. Critiquing the book from the perspective of generative linguistics Charles Young, in the London Review of Books, writes that, "...this book never runs low on hubris or hyperbole." The book's topic, the English past tense, is in Yang's view unglamorous, and Pinker's attempts at compromise risk being in no man's land between rival theories. Giving the example of German, Yang argues that irregular nouns in that language at least all belong to classes, governed by rules, and that things get even worse in languages that attach prefixes and suffixes to make up long words, they can't be learnt individually, as there are untold numbers of combinations. All Pinker and the connectionists are doing is turning over the rocks at the base of the intellectual landslide caused by the Chomskyan revolution. In The Stuff of Thought 2007, Pinker looks at a wide range of issues around the way words related to thoughts on the one hand, and to the world outside ourselves on the other. Given his evolutionary perspective, a central question is how an intelligent mind capable of abstract thought evolved, how a mind adapted to Stone Age life could work in the modern world. Many quirks of language are the result. Pinker is critical of theories about the evolutionary origins of language that argue that linguistic cognition might have evolved from earlier musical cognition. He sees language as being tied primarily to the capacity for logical reasoning, and speculates that human proclivity for music may be a spandrel a feature not adaptive in its own right, but that has persisted through other traits that are more broadly practical, and thus selected for. In How the Mind Works, Pinker reiterates Immanuel Kant's view that music is not in itself an important cognitive phenomenon, but that it happens to stimulate important auditory and spatio-motor cognitive functions. Pinker compares music to auditory cheesecake, stating that 
As far as biological cause and effect is concerned, music is useless. This argument has been rejected by Daniel Levitin and Joseph Carroll, experts in music cognition, who argue that music has had an important role in the evolution of human cognition. In his book This Is Your Brain on Music, Levitin argues that music could provide adaptive advantage through sexual selection, social bonding, and cognitive development. He questions the assumption that music is the antecedent to language, as opposed to its progenitor, noting that many species display music like habits that could be seen as precursors to human music. Pinker has also been critical of whole language reading instruction techniques, stating in How the Mind Works. The dominant technique, called whole language, the insight that spoken language is a naturally developing human instinct has been garbled into the evolutionarily improbable claim that reading is a naturally developing human instinct. Quote, in the appendix to the 2007 reprinted edition of The Language Instinct, Pinker cited Why Our Children Can't Read by cognitive psychologist Diane McGuinness as his favorite book on the subject and noted, one raging public debate involving language went unmentioned in the language instinct, the reading wars, or dispute over whether children should be explicitly taught to read by decoding the sounds of words from their spelling loosely known as phonics, or whether they can develop it instinctively by being immersed in a text-rich environment often called whole language. I tipped my hand in the paragraph in the sixth chapter of the book which said that language is an instinct but reading is not. Like most psycholinguists but apparently unlike many school boards, I think it's essential for children to be taught to become aware of speech sounds and how they are coded in strings of letters. The better angels of our nature In The Better Angels of Our Nature, published in 2011, Pinker argues that violence, including tribal warfare, homicide, cruel punishments, child abuse, animal cruelty, domestic violence, lynching, pogroms, and international and civil wars, has decreased over multiple scales of time and magnitude. Pinker considers it unlikely that human nature has changed. In his view, it is more likely that human nature comprises inclinations toward violence and those that counteract them, the better angels of our nature." He outlines six major historical declines of violence that all have their own socio, cultural, economic causes. The pacification process. The rise of organized systems of government has a correlative relationship with the decline in violent deaths. As states expand they prevent tribal feuding, reducing losses. The civilizing process. Consolidation of centralized states and kingdoms throughout Europe results in the rise of criminal justice and commercial infrastructure, organizing previously chaotic systems that could lead to raiding and mass violence. The Humanitarian Revolution. The 18th-20th century abandonment of institutionalized violence by the state breaking on the wheel, burning at the stake. Suggests this is likely due to the spike in literacy after the invention of the printing press thereby allowing the proletariat to question conventional wisdom. The long peace. The powers of 20th century believed that period of time to be the bloodiest in history. This to a largely peaceful 65-year period post-World War I and World War II. Developed countries have stopped warring against each other and colonially, adopted democracy, and this has led a massive decline on average of deaths. The new peace. The decline in organized conflicts of all kinds since the end of the Cold War. The rights revolutions. The reduction of systemic violence at smaller scales against vulnerable populations racial minorities, women, children, homosexuals, animals. The book was welcomed by many critics and reviewers, who found its arguments convincing and its synthesis of a large volume of historical evidence compelling. It also aroused criticism on a variety of grounds, such as whether deaths per capita was an appropriate metric, Pinker's atheism, lack of moral leadership, excessive focus on Europe, though the book covers other areas, the interpretation of historical data, and its image of indigenous people. <laughs> English writing style in the 21st century 
In his seventh popular book, The Sense of Style, The Thinking Person's Guide to Writing in the 21st Century 2014, Pinker attempts to provide a writing style guide that is informed by modern science and psychology, offering advice on how to produce more comprehensible and unambiguous writing in nonfiction contexts and explaining why so much of today's academic and popular writing is difficult for readers to understand. In a November 2014 episode of the Point of Inquiry podcast, host Lindsay Bayerstein asked Pinker how his style guide was different from the many guides that already exist. His answer The Thinking Person's Guide Because I Don't Issue dictates from on high as most manuals do but explain why the various guidelines will improve writing, what they do for language, what they do for the reader's experience, in the hope that the users will apply the rules judiciously knowing what they are designed to accomplish, rather than robotically. He also indicated that the 21st century was applicable because language and usage change over time and it has been a long time since William Strunk wrote Elements of Style. <laughs> Public debate Pinker is a frequent participant in public debates surrounding the contributions of science to contemporary society. Social commentators such as Ed West, author of The Diversity Illusion, consider Pinker important and daring in his willingness to confront taboos, as in the blank slate. This doctrine, the tabula rasa, writes West, remained accepted as fact, rather than fantasy, a decade after the book's publication. West describes Pinker as no polemicist, and he leaves readers to draw their own conclusions. In January 2005, Pinker defended Lawrence Summers, president of Harvard University, whose comments about a gender gap in mathematics and science angered much of the faculty. Pinker noted that Summers's remarks, properly understood, were hypotheses about overlapping statistical distributions of men's and women's talents and tastes, and that in a university such hypotheses ought to be the subject of empirical testing rather than dogma and outrage. Edge.org ran a debate between Pinker and Elizabeth Spelka on gender and science. In 2009, Pinker wrote a mixed review of Malcolm Gladwell's essays in the New York Times criticizing his analytical methods. Gladwell replied, disputing Pinker's comments about the importance of IQ on teaching performance and by analogy, the effect, if any, of draft order on quarterback performance in the National Football League. Advanced NFL stats addressed the issue statistically, siding with Pinker and showing that differences in methodology could explain the two men's differing opinions. In 2009, David Schenck criticized Pinker for siding with the nature argument and for never once acknowledge gene environment interaction or epigenetics in an article on Nature vs. Nurture in the New York Times. Pinker responded to a question about epigenetics as a possibility for the decline in violence in a lecture for the BBC World Service. Pinker said it was unlikely since the decline in violence happened too rapidly to be explained by genetic changes. Helga Vierick and Catherine Townsend wrote a critical review of Pinker's sweeping, civilizational, explanations for patterns of human violence and warfare in response to a lecture he gave at Cambridge University in September 2015. Steven Pinker is also noted for having identified the rename of Philip Morris to Altria as an egregious example of phonesthesia, with the company attempting to switch its image from bad people who sell addictive carcinogens to a place or state marked by altruism and other lofty values. Pinker continued to court controversy through his 2018 book Enlightenment Now, in which he argues that Enlightenment rationality has driven tremendous progress and should be defended against attacks from both the left and right. The Guardian criticized the book as a triumphalist work that has a curious relationship to intellectual history and overestimates the role of campus activists in mainstream discourse. While promoting the book on the NPR show 1A, Pinker caused a minor social media backlash when he said that I don't think Malcolm X did the world much good. <laughs> <laughs> Awards and distinctions Pinker was named one of Time's 100 Most Influential People in the World in 2004 and one of Prospect and Foreign Policy's 100 Top Public Intellectuals in both years the poll was carried out, 2005 and 2008. In 2010 and 2011 he was named by Foreign Policy to its list of top global thinkers. 
In 2016, he was elected to the National Academy of Sciences. His research in cognitive psychology has won the Early Career Award 1984 and Boyd McCandless Award 1986 from the American Psychological Association, the Trolland Research Award 1993 from the National Academy of Sciences, the Henry Dale Prize 2004 from the Royal Institution of Great Britain, and the George Miller Prize 2010 from the Cognitive Neuroscience Society. He has also received honorary doctorates from the Universities of Newcastle, Surrey, Tel Aviv, McGill, Simon Fraser University and the University of Tromso. He was twice a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, in 1998 and in 2003. On May 13, 2006, he received the American Humanist Association's Humanist of the Year Award for his contributions to public understanding of human evolution. Pinker has served on the editorial boards of journals such as Cognition, Daedalus, and PLOS One, and on the advisory boards of institutions for scientific research, e.g., the Allen Institute for Brain Science, Free Speech, e.g., the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, the Popularization of Science, e.g., the World Science Festival and the Committee for for Skeptical Inquiry, Peace e.g., the Peace Research Endowment, and Secular Humanism e.g., the Freedom from Religion Foundation and the Secular Coalition for America. Since 2008, he has chaired the Usage Panel of the American Heritage Dictionary, and wrote the essay on usage for the fifth edition of the Dictionary, which was published in 2011. In February 2001 Stephen Pinker, whose hair has long been the object of admiration, and envy, and intense study was nominated by acclamation as the first member of the Luxuriant Flowing Hair Club for Scientists LFHCFS organized by the Annals of Improbable Research. Bibliography Books Language Learnability and Language Development 1984 Visual Cognition 1985 Connections and Symbols 1988 Learnability and Cognition The Acquisition of Argument Structure 1989 Lexical and Conceptual Semantics 1992 The Language Instinct 1994 How the Mind Works 1997 Words and Rules, The Ingredients of Language 1999. The Blank Slate, The Modern Denial of Human Nature 2002. The Best American Science and Nature Writing Editor and Introduction Author, 2004. Hotheads, An Extract from How the Mind Works, 2005. ISBN 978-0-14-102238-3. The Stuff of Thought, Language as a Window into Human Nature 2007. The Better Angels of Our Nature, Why Violence Has Declined 2011. Language, Cognition, and Human Nature, Selected Articles 2013. The Sense of Style, The Thinking Person's Guide to Writing in the 21st Century September 30, 2014. Enlightenment Now, The Case for Reason, Science, Humanism, and Progress February 13, 2018. Topic articles and essays Selective compilation of articles and other works, hosted at Harvard Faculty Pages Pinker, S. 1991. Rules of Language. Science. 253 530-535. doi. 10.1126, science.1857983. PMID 1857983. Ullman, M., Corkin, S., Coppola, M., Hickok, G., Grodin, J. H., Koroshetz, W. J., Pinker, S. 1997. A Neural Dissociation Within Language, Evidence that the Mental Dictionary is Part of Declarative Memory, and that Grammatical Rules are Processed by the Procedural System. Journal of Cognitive Neuroscience. 9-289-299. Pinker, S. 2003. Language as an Adaptation to the Cognitive Niche. In M. Christensen and S. Kirby, eds. Language Evolution, States of the Art New York, Oxford University Press. Pinker, S. 2005 The Evolutionary Psychology of Religion Pinker, S. 2005. So How Does the Mind Work? Mind and Language. 20 1, 1-24.
doi 10.1111/j.02682164.2005.0001 x Jackendoff, R. Pinker, S. 2005. The Nature of the Language Faculty and Its Implications for Evolution of Language Reply to Fitch, Hausa, and Chomsky. Cognition. 97 211–225. doi.10.1016.j.cognition.2005.04.006. In Defense of Dangerous Ideas. Stephen Pinker. July 15, 2007. Archived from the original on August 7, 2017. Pinker, S. 2012. The False Allure of Group Selection. Edge, June 19, 2012. Pinker, S. 2013. Science is Not Your Enemy. New Republic, August 6, 2013. Pinker, S. 2014. The Trouble with Harvard, the Ivy League is broken and only standardized tests can fix it. New Republic, September 4, 2014. <laughs> See also